Senator Warren, I mentioned you. Are you picking winners and losers? So the uh, a handful of companies are going to be the big winners from all this new technology. We're talking about Amazon, Google, Facebook, Uber, like the biggest tech companies in the world. And those companies are great at just not paying a whole lot of taxes. Amazon's move will say, didn't make any money this quarter, no taxes. Google will say, it all went through Ireland, nothing here in the U.S. And so we're going to be looking around being like, where's the money going? Where's the money going as the value is going to flow right out of places like New Hampshire? Honestly, it's going to go right over to Seattle. It's going to go right, right, over, to, right over to Silicon Valley. So what we need to do is we need to put a new tax in place that actually harnesses the gains from artificial intelligence and autonomous vehicles and uh, big data and, and robots and everything else and puts it in the hands of the American people. And the most effective way to do that is to pass what's called a value-added tax, which is something that every other major economy has already done. And this way, the American people would get a sliver of every Amazon sale, every Google search, every Facebook ad, every robot truck mile, and that's where we get the, the funds. A value-added tax, because our economy is now so vast at $20 trillion, up $5 trillion in the last 12 years, would give us enough to fund a $1,000 dividend for every adult. Well, I agree with you that ideally we are not taxing labor uh, in the same way we do now, because uh, you don't want to tax things you need more of. And in my opinion, we need as much work and work-like arrangement as possible. And so ideally, you would find ways to tax things that are not labor arrangements. Uh, and so when you say, like, hey, if you, like, swap out, <laughs> you know, sorry, the income taxes for, like, a consumption tax, you're on board, that to me should be the long-term vision. The question is how you get from here to there. And so the way I would start is by uh, implementing this value-added tax at half the European level is quite modest, uh, but it would help capture some of the gains that Amazon and these other uh, mega tech companies are experiencing and return those gains to, to the American people. And some of it will float back up to, you know, Jeff and, uh, Jeff and, and Amazon again because you'll just buy an extra toaster. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, you know, like a lot of it will go to your local um, restaurants and the mechanic and the tutoring service and the hardware store, and you know, it'll help replenish um, the, the main street economy um, and create jobs. But um, there is, uh, to me, like a, a movement in that direction that we need to get to. Because right now, we're just taxing, in my opinion, or we're, we're taxing highly inefficiently. Um, and you look around, and the, the way that we're trying to address this is like, hey, you know, it's like there's like this high marginal tax rate. I try to explain to people all the time, look, Jeff Bezos is worth $160 billion, and most of that is Amazon stock. And it, it went from zero to being worth $160 billion, and he's way too smart to have a taxable event. Like, I can ratchet up the marginal tax rate very, very high, and it's not going to help anyone. Yeah, so uh, a value-added tax is in effect in every other industrialized economy in the world, except for ours. And the reason for that is that it's much, much harder for big companies to game. Like, if you're Amazon, really, you have to reflect on it. It's like, how the heck did Amazon pay zero in federal taxes? Um, that's not their fault. It's our fault. We just designed a system that has enabled them to... And it's not an anomaly, either. Their lifetime tax rate over all the years in business has been 3%. Um, so 0% is, like, their norm. And their accountants are getting bonuses and the rest of it. So every other advanced economy has already figured this out, except for us. Now, the great thing about a value-added tax is that it gets the money from where the money is. It's almost impossible to game. The, be the, the knock on it, which is accurate, is that people with lower levels of income spend a higher proportion of their money on various consumer goods, and so a value-added tax proportionally hits them harder. Now, happily, you can do what many other countries have done, which is you scale the value-added tax based upon uh, the nature of the goods you're looking at. So you could exempt various consumer staples or have a lower rate on various consumer staples, and you could really stick it to people who buy yachts or really expensive things. Um, and, and so the only drawback to exempting or scaling back the VAT on certain categories of goods is just you make less money, which is fine. So there, there's certainly going to be some, uh, some scale involved in terms of the value added tax would not be a blanket on everything. It is also the case that companies will try and pass that, some of that along to consumers. But you have to bear in mind, too, that the vast majority of Americans in a world with a freedom dividend would be, uh, would be seeing an increase in their buying power. And this $8 billion I was describing for the state of New Hampshire uh, like, would, would far, far uh, outbalance. Like, it, you'd retain something like like 80 to 85 percent of that in purchasing power, um, and it would be a, a net win for about 95 percent of Americans. Now, our income inequality is so grossly out of whack that the top five percent are holding 
a staggering amount of wealth. And so the question is, how do you get some of that 5% out? Um, and the other measures that people are discussing, frankly, will not be as effective as a value-added tax. Because when Jeff Bezos gets his money, we'll get it from Amazon. But then you know what Jeff does with his money? He spends a billion dollars a year on rocket ships to go to Mars uh, for a company called Blue Origin that he has in his backyard. Um, so then when he buys his rocket ships, we get some of that money too. You see, there's like no way out. <laughs> cool terms. Uh, it's like a, a tax at the point of sale that businesses pay throughout every stage. But Iowa would be a net winner by $16 billion. And if you think about your small struggling business, let's say their prices go up, call it 7 8%, but everyone in the community has an extra $12,000 a year. Is that business going to be better off or worse off? Well, it's going to be a lot better off, because trust me, I've done the numbers. And a place like Iowa is going to benefit 40,000 extra jobs, increase the size of your consumer economy by 12 to 15 percent, and also make your economy much more dynamic, because people can move around more, like people will have the more freedom um, and dynamism. And more what a value-added tax is. And, and keep in mind, every other advanced economy already has a value-added tax, except for us, because of what Jack just described. So, and like, the accounting firms all know how to do it very, very quickly and easily because literally they all have global clients that, I mean, if we're not about, like, big... Um, Would there be a wiling? Well, so the reason why there are all these people who are looking like AOC at like very high marginal income tax rate or Elizabeth Warren with like a wealth tax, like we realize that this economy has gotten entirely unbalanced where you have, you know, the top 1% hoovering up all the gains, like a winner take all economy. So the question is how do you balance that out? And, uh, and so to me, uh, a value added tax is a much more efficient way to do it and it's what every other country has already done because a value added tax is very hard to gain. Like if you're Jeff Bezos, you're Amazon, you're going to have to pay it as long as you're doing business in the U.S. So you could build a value-added tax where it exempts certain consumer staples so it falls more on, on the affluent than people who are just like buying diapers and the rest of it. Um, the reason why every other country uh, that's an advanced economy, aside from us, has already done it, is that it actually will get us a slice of every Amazon transaction, every Facebook ad, every Google search, every robot truck mile, and bring it to the American people, put the money in our hands, and then what are we going to do? We're going to spend that money in the economy. It's going to create two plus million jobs. And Amazon and the gang are still going to get some of that money back. You know what I mean? But at least it comes through our hands. We are the owners and shareholders of this country. And this is a dividend for us. He ain't playing. Now with this campaign. Bang. Ah. Dang. It's and true. Come roll with the gang gang. He's the one I'm endorsing. This style is awesome. Taking donations. Whatever size the portion. If not, volunteer your time instead. Grassroots won't stop at the post till he's ahead. Uh, some say, who is that? Hey, yo, the newest cat. Other candidates go home feeling super whack. Yeah, they all done. Humanity first. That's the slogan. 2020, here we come. Drop your ballot at the booth just to prove he makes moves. And guess what? Everybody gets a thousand bucks. Studies show what's bound to help economy. Making sure we all eat, not just the wealthy. Now I must confess, the country's a mess. God bless us all. It's all just a test. Why not nominate? The king of debates, yeah, it's true with the crew winning both state to state. Each turn four years, careful who you get stuck with. Drew Yang Kang, that's who I hooked up with. Not many politicians can really be trusted. Drew Yang Kang, that's who I hooked up with. Uh, yeah. Yeah. There's no place to hide now that he's arrived. I'm saying he ain't playing now with this campaign. Bang, ah, uh, dang, it's and Drew, come roll with the Yang Kang. He's the one I'm endorsing. This style is awesome. Taking donations, whatever size the portion. If not, volunteer your time instead grassroots won't stop at the polls till he's ahead uh, some say who is that hey yo the newest cat other candidates go home feeling super whack yeah they all done humanity first that's the slogan 2020 here we come drop your ballot at the booth just to prove he makes moves and guess what everybody gets a thousand bucks studies show what's bound to help economy making sure we all eat not just the wealthy now i must confess the country's a mess god bless us all it's all just a test why not nominate the king of the Base, yeah, it's true with the crew winning both state to state. Each turn four years, careful who you get stuck with. Drew Yang Kang, that's who I hooked up with. Not many politicians can really be trusted. Drew Yang
gang gang, that's who I hooked up with. Yeah. Yo, there's no place to hide now that he's arrived. I'm saying he ain't playing. Now with this campaign, bang, ah, uh, dang, is and true. Come roll with the gang gang. He's the one I'm endorsing. This style is awesome. Taking donations, whatever size the portion. If not, volunteer your time instead. Grassroots won't stop at the post till he's ahead. Uh, some say, who is that? Hey, yo, the newest cat. Other candidates go home feeling super whack. Yeah, they all done. Humanity first, that's the slogan. 2020, here we come. Drop your ballot at the booth just to prove he makes moves. And guess what? Everybody gets a thousand bucks. Studies show it's bound to help economy. Making sure we all.